And here we have an original tracking station console. It's not from Honeysuckle, but it's from Aurora, Aurora Valley. Um, and so it would have been very similar to uh, what was used at uh, Honeysuckle at the time. So let's take a squiz. Actually, it's amazing who you meet here. I've gone one better. I've got an original tracker from Aurora Valley, Mike Tobin. Thanks, Mike. And he's going to tell us about the con well, tell us about how you worked, you ended up working at Aurora Valley and what you did there. I'd been uh, working for AWI in Sydney. I'd uh, designed and installed the uh, sound system for the Opera House. And uh, I finished up there and they wanted somewhere for me to go. And at that stage, they'd just taken the contract off of Hughes to supply staff for the tracking station. And they said, did I want to go down to Canberra and work in the tracking station? Yep. I said, yep, I'll be in that. Thank you very much. And what year was that? That was uh, 67. And what did they do at Aurora Valley? They tracked most of the uh, low orbit satellites. We did track... Uh, a thing called an imp, which looked at the radiation levels between the Earth and the Moon before right. the missions to make sure it was safe for the astronauts to, to go. Uh, and uh, just general support work for um, the, the rest of the right. facility. So could Aurora Valley have uh, received the Apollo uh, no, we, data and telemetry? Our us? antennas were uh, rigged for um, UHF frequencies, whereas right. the um, uh, honeysuckle was for microwave frequencies. Console here, you worked on one of these? This was a tracking console. Uh, uh, yep. Actually had a, another layer came out in front of it which had the uh, ball on it that they could see uh, the antenna. You, you also had the uh, track ball and yeah, you could move yeah, it? How, yeah. how often did you use the track ball to manually move things? Um, just about every pass. You'd oh, have to, okay. uh, because the satellites were in low orbit, they would come yep. over the horizon very quickly. You would have to uh, have the dish pointing at the right position ready for the pass and then you would just take it gently across. Take about 12. Oh, gentle. So yeah. you, you just did it at the right angle by, yeah. Yeah. by hand with your tongue at the right angle going <laughs> like sticking your tongue out and going, there, yeah, I There was a beacon right. on most spacecraft right. and as long as you could keep the big beacon oh, uh, right. good okay. signal Oh, right, OK, so you're based on uh, signal level, yeah. was it? Yeah. Right, so yeah. you try and track it and then keep the peak signal level. And there'd, be, that... there'd be other operators who'd be taking data or housekeeping off of the, the satellite or experiments if they were doing... Uh, Photos of the sun with some of the uh, OSO ones and so forth. So, yeah. Right, excellent. Well, can you tell us about this uh, concept? How similar would this be to a honeysuckle console? Uh, different, different. Yep. Um, I'm not sure where the honeysuckle, I think they said they did have a golf ball. At one stage, they also had a joystick. Uh, yes, they did. Well, oh, a joystick instead yeah. of the trackball? Yes. Right. Yeah, uh, which was probably an easier uh, configuration to work with. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, much the same though, basically the same sort of thing, to okay. track, tracking. And, and right, so what does a tracking console do? What, what various functions does it perform? It, it points the dish at the spacecraft. Right, so, yeah. so it's an alignment point in... Most of, all of the communications that go on with spaceships is line of sight. So you have to have the dish pointing at the, the satellite, uh, and the dish driver will actually do the driving of the dish to point it in the right direction. Right, so the tracking console is just pretty much for steering the dish. That That's it. And how accurate do, do you need to steer it for uh, Earth orbit, uh, for example? A few, a few degrees. Whereas uh, Honeysuckle Creek and the uh, microwave frequencies would be a fraction of a degree. Right, OK. Yeah. At, at, at that would be at lunar distance. Yes. You'd have to yeah. be more accurate yeah. at lunar. Yeah. So, can you tell us uh, the like the various point out the various functions here? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> start, start, start with the top uh, left. Um, What's up DC, there? DC control, AC control, uh, the alarm systems, and, and just general power supplies at the top, uh, and then um, the the next little bit on the the left hand side is uh, for monitoring beacons and actually getting the dish to line up properly with them. Uh, and you've got your azimuth and elevation and the calibration. Before each mission, you'd swing it around to a calibration tower and make sure that it was actually pointing north and south where it should point. Right, so there was actually a tower nearby. Was it up yeah. on a hill or something? Yeah, up on a hill, yeah. And uh, what was the beam angle of that? Did you uh, have to... Uh, about a degree. So what's the AC control? What's the difference between the AC and DC control? AC, we had our own generators there. They generate their own power. The power would come in and it would be then controlled to be accurately... Uh, 415 volts into each of the pieces of equipment uh, and then it would be rectified and uh, provide DC voltages and they would stabilise them with the DC controller. Okay, and overheat alarm, what would overheat? 
I don't think I ever saw that go off in the whole <laughs> <laughs> Luckily. So, uh, but, but what was it actually monitoring? What temperature of what? Oh, uh, motors just or the something? Motors, yeah, yeah. yeah right. one, of the, one of the interesting things about it that we did do with the, the controller was during the winter when we had a satellite that was slower than some of the others and it would slowly go across the sky, it would fill up with snow. Right, yes. And so we would have to take the signal off of that, off of the dish and put it on another antenna yeah. and then slowly bring the dish around to the stop and give it a little yeah. nudge on a the... A little nudge uh, on the... And on all the, the snow will... And then you could go back to tracking you. Because if you disturb the shape of the dish yeah. with it being filled up with snow, its performance would deteriorate. Right. Oh, okay. So if it's got snow on it, it will it will distort the yeah. the, the the parabolic nature of the dish, yes. and that'll decrease its sensitivity. Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Why do they have little um, scope screens on them? Uh, the, these ones below here. What what are the ones below the AC control just, with the little scope just, screens? They'd be reading some of the data that we're coming back. So that right. the, the when we're operating the dish, one of the things you'd be looking at is that you have nice clean data coming off of the. Uh, yep. Equipment and that would just be a feedback from the receivers to let you know that it would be nice clean data. And that would be an analogue waveform, would yep, it? Or? Yep, right, yep. okay. So you did, what was it, what sort of, uh, what sort of modulation was it and things like that? Was it like a... And, and some of them just had a single sine wave. Oh, that's the, it, others, right. Others would have uh, some telemetry, uh, bursts of telemetry. We've got the various, uh, okay, so we've got those monitoring controls. What are the AGC meters down there? Right, the same thing, we're measuring the AGC off the receivers from yep. the tracking side. The fee feedback from the, the uh, operations area back into the tracking area. Got it. So were the uh, low noise receivers uh, cool down on your dish? No, no, they no, 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 they no, weren't. No. At, so at, they uh, didn't need to be sensitive enough. Megs, it, it, it's sensitive enough to. Oh, I saw it was only at 100 megs. Ah, yeah. oh, right, okay. Whereas well, the ones at Carnarvon uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the desert, yep. uh, they cooled them down to uh, about th minus uh, uh, about three degrees absolute. Right, because they they were tracking Apollo. The the Carnarvon was one of the yep. Apollo yep. tracking yep. Yep. stations. Yep. yep, but only for Earth. Insertion, yes. Earth insertion, right. Got it. Okay, so what else have we got here? What's the uh, standard time? It's got a clock on it. Yes, they Why, have. Yeah, did time matter much? Yes, the, yep. the, the whole of the station was locked to... It was all... The whole of the network, yep. the whole of the Saturday network was locked together on the one time. Right. And we and had, we had all... an atomic clock. And yep. And it was on an analogue um, dial, it wasn't none of this digital rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And what's what are the analogue phase meters? What do they do? Uh, the, yeah, the ones... Oh, yeah, if the dish is pointing slightly off from the satellite, you would get a phase difference between one side of the dish and the other side of the dish. Mm -hmm. So the phase meters, you would keep them on zero, and you would know that you were tracking the spacecraft perfectly. And track RF, so the calibration, track That's RF calibration. That's what we talked about before yep. with the calibration Yeah, tower. More, more calibration. And what's the recorder? Could you record We had Amp Ampex 8 track recorders. Right, and uh, they would be recording what, the position the, the, of the... the yeah, the, the housekeeping data or the experiments that the, the satellite was doing at the time. Right. But we could also have a look at them to see what was happening. Got it. And I assume right down the bottom, they're, they're the power supplies. Yes, the power supplies. Yes, and they'd be uh, voltage current current meters or yeah, just, yeah, yep. Yeah. So you said the um, the panel extended out the front and it had a trackball and what else on it? Do, Any uh, other? Oh, uh, just based from the right notes. And, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Did it have a coffee holder? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we had a, a, a shift chef who uh, works in the canteen. And uh, if you were tracking a satellite, uh, and it was lunchtime, and you couldn't leave you doing your tracking. He would come in with a little uh, tray and some. And yeah, you'd eat lunch at your console and, and keep, keep on going. tracking. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. And what's the? What are those on the top? Are they strobe lights? What are they? No, they're just fans. They're, oh, just fans. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were, were they noisy, or was no, it no, noisy no. in the tracking room? No, no. no? Right. Okay, yeah. just needed some cooling, yeah. uh, some ventilation. Yeah. Got it. Well, I hope you got something out of that. Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Mike. You're welcome. Appreciate okay. it.